Hello, I'm Julie Garnier from Rustic Cottage Co. And welcome to my channel. I am located in the northwest of England, but I have traveled quite a lot around the different countries, US, um, Canada and Mexico, mostly, but also around the Caribbean. Through my journey of travel, I've learned to love the different styles of decoration, home decor and furniture and started my own business creating and selling for myself. My channel here on YouTube, Rustic Cottage Co, is now doing so well, I am happy to create every week a different video to show you furniture, home decor of different styles, shabby chic, rustic, primitive, shabby chic, farmhouse, lots of different ideas i love them all i am equally all and differently i hope i inspire you to create too and i hope you enjoy this video thanks for watching i'm julie from rustic cottage co hello and welcome i'm julie from rustic cottage co if you're new to my channel welcome and hope you have a great time don't forget to subscribe and if you've come here many times to see what I've been doing, what I've been getting up to lately, um, welcome back. This week, it's January, it's uh, cold, it's uh, wet, but you know what? It's actually not as cold as Canada. So now I'm in the UK, it's a little bit warmer than it is in Canada. So the winters are not quite as harsh. Um, I think they are a little bit longer than they are in Canada, but they're not as harsh. And I'm actually off work right now. Um, I always have taken time off in January, so I chose to continue that pattern on and take two weeks off for um, January um, to just, as my full-time job is being out and walking around house to house, looking after the elderly, um, I don't have to walk around as much in the wet, cold, worst weather of the year, which tends to be January. Not always, but sometimes. So yes, I've taken some time off. This week I am off and I'm going to be doing some crafts and some fun. But also I kind of figured, why not go out and about and enjoy and do some traveling and get out and uh, some exploring. So off went in the car and uh, decided to go down to North Wales. Now I uh, haven't been to North Wales since I was a little girl. I don't remember it. I know I've been but um, it's almost like I'm going for the very first time. So I'm going to North Wales and just staying over and enjoying myself there and have a walk around on the beach and that it's going to be showery, it's going to be a little on the cold side, about 8, 9, 10 degrees in the daytime, um, a little bit colder at night, and some showers, but I'm going to wrap up warm, put my big winter coat on, my walking shoes on, and have some exploring and enjoy it. So let's go off to Wales, and I'll show you all what I can see, and what I do, and what I get up to, and a little bit about the place. Now, I don't know much about Wales other than it is Welsh, <laughs> you know, it, it's got its own language. They do speak English and Welsh, um, so that is very interesting. I don't know anything about the language. I don't know much about the history, so I'm going to do a little bit of research on that and show you the science. So let's see where I end up. So I'm going to a place that is called, you pronounce it in English, Landed Now, or Landed Now, but it is spelt, it's the Welsh name, and I will give you the pronunciation in Welsh as well. This is it as Landed Now, Landed Now. So this is one of the large, well, it is the largest seaside, seaside resort in Wales and uh, it's beautiful. It dates to around the 1860s, but obviously knowing Welsh and English history, it actually, the earliest history dating back to around 1260s, 1280s. But in 1861, I believe, that's when the town really became popular and started to be a seaside resort and very popular. 
it also has on the coast very high up going up 650 feet um, high up the port and it's called the Great Orm that's the name of the area and um, you can go up in a cable car up there and go to the summit at the top and also on the side of it they have a dry ski slope for anyone wants to do some dry skiing and beautiful views and mostly lots of goats it is named after the great arm know the goats that are in the area and that are all on that mountainside there the uh, goats that was kind of fun to see as well. So I did go part way up and had a drink and looked over and enjoyed myself and then went down to the seaside to the promenade and the beach and went for a walk. Come and have a look to see what I looked at. So here we are and I'll pronounce it landed now as that's how the English say it and that's leave it at that let the Welsh be excellent at their own language um, I just do not want to say it wrong that would be not good but here I am on the beach absolutely beautiful and it um, it's on the Irish Sea so this is the Irish Sea and went for a beautiful walk along the seafront beautiful wintry day a few showers came but never when I was outside. I enjoyed it, walked all along, went out on the promenade or along the pier and just had a beautiful, amazing, great January day out for my vacation and stayed overnight and just had a wonderful time. It's beautiful. I, I, I can't even show you. I mean, it looks lovely, doesn't it, in these pictures, but it was absolutely beautiful, had an amazing time and on the side here coming up as I'm just going to show you um, is a beautiful hotel right on the cliff edge there, oh the amazing the views from there and then the pier just around the corner, this is the Irish Sea and just went for a beautiful walk, I had a lovely time. So now I am back from discovering a little bit of the beauty of Wales and experienced landed no and enjoyed some beach time, some walking and fresh air back home and ready to do some crafts. Now I'm going to do some decoupage with some a napkin, simple and easy. Now I have this napkin here and I'm going to uh, just literally cut it in half along horizontally and uh, you can get two projects out of one napkin so that's always good. Now if you wanted it to be a bit more of a faint line you can always use the method I used last week where you can um, put a wet line across with a paintbrush and just rip. Now this being all white here I actually don't need to do that because it'll be white going on white and this um, particular napkin is coming apart very easily but what you're trying to achieve is ripping off the back layers they call it ply it could be a two ply three ply um, napkin and you're just literally pulling off the backing because you want it as thin as possible so that's one now I believe this is two so I'm going to just slightly wet my fingers and just pull apart the other let's see if I can grab it I can feel it it's just not particularly pulling apart I think I have it now what I'm actually going to be decoupaging you'll find a little bit unusual I don't know some people have these in the house some people don't but it's basically an air freshener now this one's an airwick one you put in your airwick um whatever smell you want for your room it's battery operated it squeezes here and your scent comes into your room this one i got and it's mulled wine i wanted that one for over the christmas season and it's a um, beautiful christmasy smell and i'm using this in my room but what I thought would be fun would be to decoupage the container um, so that it has some prettiness to it and a little less like um, an air freshener. 
So what I'm going to do is just take it apart right now so that I can just paint the top part. And the reason I'm painting it, because I'm painting it white, the reason I'm painting it is just that to glue onto it would be better to glue onto the paint than plastic. It is quite shiny and it would the glue doesn't stick as well. So I'm just using my usual chalk paint. Now the chalk paint, you can literally paint onto anything. And what I'm doing is I'm going to be just putting a thin layer of paint all over this top part here of the Airwick freshener. Now you can use any kind of decal page, dec, dec, <laughs> decapage, um, different papers. Um, you can use any of them, you know, you can use any pattern. I'm using a napkin, just simple napkin, and that's how I'm doing it. And what I'm going to do is just put a nice picture of some flowers just on. Now, obviously here where is, is where the scent comes out. So you're going to be doing a little bit of a hole there when you finally finished. But right now I'm just putting one layer of paint over. It doesn't really matter what color. I think white is better because then the white, the clearness of the actual um, napkin will be more visible. And this white color obviously is not shown um, on the whiteness of the plastic. So I'm just doing one coat all over and then let it dry. And I find the actual um, glue adheres to the paint better than it does to the plastic. And that's the only reason I'm painting it first is just so that the glue actually has something to hold onto with the paint. Now this is the same technique as you can do with mason jars and anything else. Um, just put on one coat of paint and then let it dry. Okay, so the paint is dry. As I say, I just needed one coat on there just to have a base because the glue is going to adhere to the paint better than it would the plastic. That's the only reason. Now, what I'm doing here is going to be putting um, the napkin around um, the uh, actual piece. The napkin is bigger than the piece, so I will need all of it. And if you can see also, the top is a different shape than the bottom. So you're going to be careful doing that when you do put it on. So figure out where you want all everything to be and uh, then we're going to do, when we've got the glue on, we're going to put the top together first and then move our way down. So I'm going to put where I want the front of it to be on my table and we're going to be putting it down this way. But let's get the glue on first. get some glue onto your brush and you're just gonna everywhere put a thin layer of the glue. Decoupage, um, uh, Mod Podge is the best thing to use. I still don't have any. The only reason I don't have any is because I haven't picked any up yet. I can order it from Amazon and I will. I just haven't yet. You know, life got in the way, and so I'm still using the white glue at this point. It doesn't do quite as good job, but it's not far off. So just get your glue and put it, spread it everywhere around. Nice. Thin layer, not too thin, not too thick. Um, everywhere you need it. Get it in all the grooves. You don't want it too wet and you don't want it too dry. So just push it around everywhere that you want the actual napkin to stick. 
and as I say in any grooves this part in here this little middle part obviously we're going to be using as a whole because that's where the scent comes out so just get it on nice and even and then I'm going to put this down here now we're going to put it down flat where we want it to be and then we're going to wrap it around. So got the middle there. I'm going to wrap the napkin around and then wrap the other side around. We know it's not even. We know that. So just let it meet where it wants to meet naturally and we will take that off later. Start pinching together at the top and work your way down for less wrinkles as you do it then don't touch anymore what we're going to do is put some plastic down and we're going to wrap the plastic around it you can use a bag you can use any kind of plastic material cling film whatever you want to use and just put it around and wrap it around and just push everything in place so it adheres to the glue nicely and doesn't stick to your fingers. Now any parts that you don't need we can rip away later when it's all dry. Until it's dry just leave it be. Let it be where it is and we'll rip away anything we don't need afterwards. When you're peeling this plastic back off, peel it off gently. And then just, we've got some grooves here, so I'm just gonna press it into the grooves. And then, as I say, just peel it off gently and then just leave it to dry. You want the, the glue to be completely dry and then we will start to rip things, holes and everything we need out afterwards. But right now, let's just leave this glue to dry. So now this is dry and I'm going to be tidying it up and the easy way to do that is using a small brush and some water and just literally going along any parts that you want to rip off. It's the easiest way, just go along with the water to soften the um, napkin and just rip it away. It gives a nice clean edge, a smooth edge, and um, less harsh. And do it that way, take your time going along. I mean, it is still a napkin. We haven't protected it fully yet. So um, just make sure you don't rip too harshly. And the water helps you kind of get it in places you want it to be. Um, Going along the back here, just go along the back, just slightly near where you've got the line of the glue and just rip down where you have wet it. Taking the, the access off and then just tidying up, as I say, just take your time with the water and it gives it a nice edge that way and cleans it up. Also I'm going to be doing here, I'll go around everywhere, but we have this hole here that we want to um, kind of open up as well. So just use the wetness of the little brush and just get in there and open up the hole. And it just takes away the napkin part that isn't glued down. When you finish that, then we'll just put the top coat on. So I'm just going to carry on doing the bottom edge the same way with the water, just going along and tidying up all the edges. So now that all the edges, everything is cleaned up, I'm just going to use a little bit of a bigger brush. I'm going to dip it in my water, not too wet, but just in the water. And then over here, I've got some more glue. 
Now I want my brush wet and a little bit of glue as if you have it too much glue, too thick, too heavy, you're gonna rip on the paper. You just want to dab gently so you're not ripping any of the paper and just go along the top of the napkin and not ripping it. It's still delicate, it's still fragile. That's why, you know, if you wet the um, brush a little first, it's more like the um, Mod Podge rather than thick white glue. It just makes it a little bit easier to work with and just cover the whole napkin, napkin with covering a glue. And this gives it a top coat that is um, waterproof you can dust it you can do whatever you want with it after it, it completely dries so just go around the whole thing gently just here put in a covering of glue or mod podge if you have it over the whole thing and then you are finished and can put it back together as i say wait for the whole thing to dry and uh, make sure if you're using just white glue, make sure that your brush is wet or add a little bit of water to the actual glue itself. So it's just a little bit easier to work with and you're not ripping the um, napkin. And again, this all this is now is a little bit of a, a top coat to use. And make sure the whole thing's dry, wipe up any areas that maybe you don't want the glue or you've got too thicker um, edges because you have to be able to click it all back into place when it's finished. Just need a little tiny bit more glue. Let's put this down a second. Just getting a tiny little bit more glue just to finish it off and as i say let it stay overnight um let it completely dry just so the whole thing is hard dry and you can then easily just click it all back together It is delicate, be careful you don't put your fingers on it because your fingers on the glue would just rip the paper up um, just because your fingers would peel it back up. But there you go, and we're just gonna let that completely dry. As I say, overnight. And uh, then we'll uh, put it all back together. Thank you for watching. I'm Julie Garnier from Rustic Cottage Co. Don't forget to subscribe.